Well, hello, my name's Gary DeBoer. Someone asked me what brought me to Laterno University, and I can tell you it was a 1986 Chevy celebrity. Didn't last too much longer after we got here, which was back in the 90s. But that's what brought me here, and um, brought me out of the cold of the Midwest down to the warm, sunny skies of, of Texas here. A better question might be, what's kept me here all these years? Because certainly there was other places that I could have gone since coming here. But what's kept me here is uh, the spirit of Laterno University. And there's lots of spirit of Laterno. There's spirits in the dorms. There's spirit of ingenuity that we've got here. But there's also the, the spirit of God that you can feel amongst uh, the students and other things that we have going on here. So since I've been here um, at Laterno since 98, which is more than 20 years now, I've had lots of fun opportunities, both at Laterno, but in other places as well. I've had summer opportunities with the NASA um, Johnson Space Center down there, where I worked at carbon nanotubes for a while. Um, I worked at the Naval Research Lab one summer in DC, which was an interesting place. More nanotechnology we did there. And I spent a, a lot of summers um, with the Air Force Research Lab doing stuff related to chemistry and um, air type chemistry in space as well. You know, down here in the troposphere, we talk about oxygen being the oxygen molecule, O2, but up in space, oxygen becomes the atom, where it's a di-radical. And you know about those radicals of the 60s, maybe your grandparents from that era, and they're very reactive. So I did a lot of chemistry with respect to those oxygen radicals. More recently, though, I've gotten involved with um, intellectual property and working in the areas of, of patent law. And this fits in well with this um, whole idea of Laterno being the Christian Polytechnic University. And the question is, you know, what is a Christian Polytechnic University? You know, you can talk about technology and engineering and science, but if you're a Christian university, you gotta be something bigger than that. It's not just the technology, it's how you use the technology, how you place the technology into society, how you ask the big questions that are involved with all of this sort of thing. And so my recent work in intellectual property um, involves working with inventors to identify what's their patentable work, and then working with patent agents and attorneys to write up that work and prosecute, so we say, we say prosecute those patents with the USPTO to obtain intellectual property rights for um, for those, those things that they invent. And just the process of thinking about what's patentable helps inventors and scientists think more about what technology is and how it could be used in society and whether it could be used for good or for evil and those big questions about how do you prevent it being used for evil or all that kind of stuff. So it brings in that whole university picture with respect to technology. How do you write with respect to technology? How do you think ethically about technology? How do you think about the distribution of goods in the economy, that goods that are brought by technology? Um, so lots of cool questions that we have um, there with respect to that whole vision of the Christian Polytechnic University. So this last summer I was working with the Air Force Research Lab doing some of this um, IP stuff and it was a lot of fun um, because I got to see lots and lots of labs at the Air Force Lab. When I worked at the Air Force as a scientist I just saw the lab that I worked in which was cool and all that. But when I went back there this summer and worked in their IP I saw lots of labs and they gave me this sort of security clearance where I could go any place and nobody asked whether I should know anything or not and so they just told me everything and my badge got me into all these labs and I think it probably got me into more places than I should have been but it was all kind of fun and so I got to talk to chief scientists and uh, patent attorneys and I worked in this nuclear weapons building where you had to check your cell phone at the door and it was all this sort of stuff that you'd watch on some you know, TV movie thing. So that was really cool. And so when we came back to Laterno, we thought, well, how can we sort of set up the same uh, model that the Air Force is using for technology to help spur 
the development of technology here at Laterno. And so that's what I've been doing um, this year with, uh, with both students and with faculty, um, trying to get them to figure out what they're doing with respect to their technology, um, incentivize that process, um, build that invention into something that the business school can look at and ask, is this a marketable sort of thing? Um, maybe give it to the theology people and ask them, is this an ethical thing to do? Are all things good to do even if you can do them? And if they can be done, should you do them so somebody else doesn't do them? Or should you just prevent them from being done somehow? Those are all good questions that we ask. And so that's what I'm hoping for um, in the next uh, few years to explore this, this area here and see where it takes us as a university as we explore what it means to be a Christian polytechnic university. And if you're interested in those things, I hope you might want to join us. Um, what most students don't know is that anybody who works in IP law, who becomes a patent agent or a patent attorney, must have a scientific degree. So um, you can't just be a lawyer with an undergraduate degree in history or poli-sci. You need to have a science or engineering degree if you want to go into law with respect to IP law. And so Laterno is the place for that. We've got the science and the engineering programs. And now we are starting to explore this whole idea of how you apply that to, to patent law and the bigger picture of what it means to be a Christian polytechnic university. So if you're interested in science and technology, but you're also interested in law, and you wonder how you can put those things together, you know, come to Laterno and explore what it means to be that Christian polytechnic university, what it means to practice law in the area of science and engineering. And um, we'd be happy to talk to you about that. So come on and um, visit and ask your questions. So the big thing that we're doing is we're offering a course now and we call Patent Law for Scientists and Engineers. And this law prepares um, our students to take what we call the USPTO bar exam so they could become patent agents. Um, and that would be a big plus for you if you went on into industry. So you could say something you know a little bit about patent law. Also, if you want to go to law school, it's a big plus if you've already passed the patent bar exam before you go to law school. Those are two separate things. Your, your law bar and your patent bar exam are very different things. So that's, that's the big sort of thing that's on paper there. Beyond that, um, I've been talking to a lot of the different classes. I talked to the entrepreneur class over there in the business office about what patent law is all about. I've talked to the senior design classes about their work in their senior design projects and to look for this and that and the next thing to know if their work is patentable. And this all goes back to when I was um, about the age of our students here, a little bit older. I had my first job as a chemist was as a bachelor degree chemist and I was working for this company that produced rear view mirrors. And we had a patent on our rear view mirrors that um, allowed the mirrors to automatically dim when a car came up from behind you. Maybe you've seen these in different cars, or maybe you have one in your car. So this other big mirror company, um, they started manufacturing a mirror like ours, and so there was this big patent infringement um, thing that happened. And so as one of the working chemists in this group, you know, my notebooks were all you know, subpoenaed by the attorneys and all this kind of stuff. And I had to do depositions and all this. And then one day, my boss asked me to um, bring this mirror over to the, the attorneys over at the hotel on my way home, which is a fine thing to do because I lived near there. So I just brought the mirror over there to the attorneys. And I was happy to get on my way and leave. But they called me back and said, Gary, come down here and sit for a while. We want to talk to you. And these attorneys, they started grilling me on all this stuff, and they weren't very nice. In fact, I was quite uncomfortable. They were like really bad-mannered people, I thought, walking around in fancy suits, wine glasses sitting around. I thought, these guys are half drunk, and they're being mean to me. I just want to get out of here. Anyway, the next day, I go see my boss, and he goes, well, how did it go with the attorneys? I said, well, great. I dropped the mirror off, and I got my job accomplished. And he said to me, well, Gary, that wasn't really what the test was. It wasn't whether you could drop the mirror off. It was how you performed with the attorneys there. Because we were going to put you on the witness stand with respect to this trial. But after your performance with the attorneys there, they decide you wouldn't be a good witness. 
And I kind of felt bad about that afterwards. I kind of felt like I let my boss down. And um, for students that come to Letourneau today, I think it would behoove them if they knew a little bit about IP law so they won't make the same mistake that I made there as a, as a young chemist. And um, that's all we ask. You know, as parents, we want better things for our children. As professors, we want better things for our students. We want to give you an inheritance our academic inheritance for um, those who come next to us. We, in academics, we oftentimes talk about our um, academic ancestors. You know, our PhD advisor was so-and-so, and, -so, and his, so, his advisor was so-and-so. And we relate, you know, ourselves to our great-grandfathers in our academic sense, you know, worked on this area. And so also we do that at Laterno. Um, we accept you in and we sort of adopt you as our academic children and we want to give you what we felt we needed when we were your age. We want you to do better than what we did at your age. We want this next generation to produce more than what we did. Not just for themselves but for the greater kingdom of God and to bring this all in and to um, you know, really do something here in the world and let you change what's going on. And so that's our hope here and my hope here at Laterno University.